Hey everybody, today we're going to be looking at James chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. James 1, 1 says this, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes in the dispersion, greetings. Verse 2, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. It is important to note here, right off the bat, that trials of various kinds is purposefully general as it can apply to any kind of trial, including a pandemic, including dealing with the aftermath of your own sin, including depression and anger and more. James suggests that we can find joy in any trial. Why? Well, he tells us in verse 3, For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. The first thing I want us to draw from verse 3 is that it is assumed here that any trial is a test of faith. In other words, when you go through any kind of trial, you will either draw nearer to God, your faith will grow, or you will go further from Him. Your faith, your trust in Him will not grow. It is, listen, up to you. It's up to you. I've seen people lose loved ones, and often they'll say something like this. I just don't know how anybody could get through a time like this without Jesus. Have you ever said that? I've also seen people go through similar situations and ask, how could God do this and end up walking away from their faith? I've seen people commit sin, Christians commit sin. They're overwhelmed with grief. They come running back to God asking for forgiveness and, and they are, are gratefully, uh, gratefully feel forgiven. I've also seen people uh, uh, fall into sin, Christians fall into sin, and conclude that God could never love them. They've messed up too many times, and so they walk away from God. Every trial of any kind is a test of faith, and you have to decide if you will run to God or run away from God in that moment. The second thing I want us to draw from verse 3 is this. James says we can find joy in our trials because these tests, when handled righteously, produce steadfastness in us. What he means by steadfastness is unshakable faith. A great example of this is Moses. I, I tend to always go to, um, go to Moses uh, for, for illustrations uh, um, of, of everyday life. Moses uh, is approached by God at the burning bush to go to Egypt, and he doesn't want to go. Even after miraculous signs, he doesn't want to go. You guys know the story. But in spite of himself, he goes. He uh, is worrisome, and he complains the entire way. But no matter what happens, uh, in one crisis after another, in the midst of his worry, in the midst of his frustration with God, he keeps on following God. Then, when standing at the Red Sea, that very same Moses, who was once so fearful and worrisome, as he sees the Egyptian army bearing down on he and the Israelites uh, with the Red Sea before him, he looks to the Israelites and he says, Fear not, stand firm. And see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. Moses basically said, look, I don't know how God's going to save us, but he's going to. All you need to do is sit back and watch. Do you see how his stubborn following of God led to a steadfastness in his faith, an unshakable faith? James completes this thought in verse 4. He says, and let steadfastness have its full effect. He says, this is why you should be joyful when you face trials. Let steadfastness have its full effect, which is this, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. When James says complete and, and, and says lacking nothing, these are, are the better definition of the word perfect, right? When James says perfect, uh, he doesn't mean moral perfection. We must never conclude that we are expected to attain moral perfection. The Bible cannot expect that from us and preach the gospel at the same time. As the gospel tells us, we are incapable of moral perfection. Here, the word perfect uh, means that we become more and more complete, more and more fulfilled, more and more ourselves as God meant for us to be. All of this is attained as we grow closer to God vis-a-vis -vis our trials. And, and so Paul says, we do not lose heart. Even though our bodies are wasting away, our souls are being renewed day by day. And Jesus says, whoever drinks the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Here's a few questions for you. What trials are you facing right now? 
Think about worries. Think about financial struggles, relational struggles. Think about sin in your life. Okay? What trials are you facing right now? In each of these trials, are you moving towards God or away from Him? Think about it. Are you blaming God? Are you giving up on God? Are you going to other gods for answers or relief? Or are you leaning on God, seeking God, being honest with Him? In each of these trials, are you moving toward God or away from Him? Third question, who are you talking to about your struggles? As I grow in my own walk, I have become uh, completely and thoroughly convinced of this truth. You are not meant to face any trial alone. Who are you talking to about this stuff? You need to be talking to someone. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 22, Jesus says, But the one who endures to the end will be saved. He does not mean the one who behaves to the end will be saved. What he means is the one who remains steadfast in their faith. They keep on stubbornly trusting, trusting Jesus every time, even when they don't feel like it. Hey, take joy as you face trials of many kinds. It's testing your faith, and these tests can produce steadfastness and then completeness that will cause you to be able to move through these times with triumph. We'll see you tomorrow.